it's true. Arthur brought out my singing voice. He reached my juice spot. It's a real spot. It's where life is conceived deep inside you, right? When you think about that. So anything that deep inside you, I'm speaking metaphorically, is going to feel good, but also physically when you think about it. I'm talking about anatomy, my friends. But anyway, Arthur made me feel really good. And sometimes when we had sex, he would make me feel so good. Let me say that again, looking at the camera. Sometimes when we had sex, often when we had sex, or is that often? He made me feel so good that I would start to sing. I would warble like a bird. It's true. <laughs> I forget sometimes that I sing because it's not something that I ever regularly did or thought of doing. But the other reason I keep going back to kids is that I did sing when I was in chorus in public school as an elementary student at South Grove Primary School in Syasa, New York. And I'm obsessed with doubles. And Arthur is my double, but Jake Gyllenhaal also did a movie called The Double. Or not called The Double, but about a doppelganger. And it's true that Arthur and my ex Matt and Jake all seem to collide in a way that inspired me to go the distance when, as I always say, push came to shove at Gettysburg College, you know. I mean, that is going to be with me for the rest of my life because that narrative, that story, that historical fact, despite all of the reenactments, despite the fact that a school is there, people don't remember Gettysburg. You know, they don't remember what war is like, you know? A lot of people just have no conception of what pain is like. You know? And I'm somebody who's always known pain, but I was fortunately able to experience everything that life has to offer. And that's how I was able to find inner peace because I realized there was no fear of missing out for me because I had already tasted the smorgasbord of life, you know? I had already been disillusioned by politics by the don't ask, don't tell bill, but <coughs> don't forget, I was coming around to slaying Bill and not in a good way when it came to the whole sister soldier piece and my revision of my dissertation from the book version, which of course I'm not doing. I abandoned that pretty immediately after my academic career was over at Gettysburg College. But make no mistake, I will get back into academia. Academia needs thinkers and doers 
like me, you know, there are a lot of people who are harmed by the academic industrial complex, but insofar as it's going to remain and it will, there's a lot that I can teach, especially about making your message relevant, your research relevant, right? How to be the people's microphone for your own work. And in that respect, I always want to thank Ruth Wilson Gilmore. You know, because it was not just the political, economic analysis, but it was also the communication model that she participated in that was influential to me. You know, about how to communicate these hard facts. And that's why today, even at my teacher training for my new job in the education sector, you know, life is so simple. It should be about being happy. It should be about loving kindness. Let me, I'm not even checking myself in the framing. I'm so tuned out. It should be about loving kindness, right? But this is also what I keep trying to say about acting. It's like acting for me, and I can tell I'm a little bit puffier now because I've been overeating a little bit because I've been smoking a lot. And then I've been getting really high and then I've been eating, right? Because I have you know, addictive so-called tendencies. You know, and it's not a picnic, you know, but... But there's nothing that I want or desire anymore that I can't manifest for myself, you know? It's, you know, the same old, same old with me. Arthur has been leaving me hints for years now by you know, he wants to get back together. But it's also true that I am trying to write a book. You know, I mean, that's what I need to do, you know, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to write a book for anybody, but it's also not the easiest thing in the world for me for a variety of reasons. And yet I'm gonna make it happen. Every day I get closer to doing it, you know? And the book is gonna be fantastic when it's finally done because I understand what I'm writing about now. You know. I actually... Oops! This is okay still. You can check out my OnlyFans, people, if you want something more graphic, but... I mean, this is okay. I just... I got the blood on here. I mean, I didn't get the blood on here. Do you know what I mean? There's like, you know, what more can I say? I can eat these Bobo's Oat Bites chocolate almond brownie flavor. They're really pretty healthy for you. These Uniqlo sweatshorts I got at the Goodwill here in Glendale like two years ago. Not like, I did get them two years ago. For like $3, <laughs> right? This is from H&M New Shirt. Perfect to wear to work if your work lets you wear stuff like this. 
cotton briefs from H&M. Excellent quality, I have to say. I like Intimacimis, but these are a great backup. You know, and as I said the other day, I got a great... Right, we've got the Mush product. Is there added sugar in these products? Sure. But there's not a ton. These are called Healthier for You Snacks. And I, for one, would much prefer to eat these when I get high than to, say, have a peanut butter cup. Plus, I already had a peanut butter cup today at work. You know what I mean? I'll tell you one thing, people. Any place of employment that provides snacks and coffee in the house is a great place to work. Look at that. This is almost like a hostess. Devil dog. I used to love those things. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh huh. You know, I'm grateful, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you to everybody who's helped me get this far in my life. There's still a lot I would like to accomplish, but every day the storyline of my book project becomes more clear. On the one hand, I turn to crystal meth as an experiment that definitely proved more than I... proved to be more than I anticipated. It was much harder to stop the meth than I... F Let's put it this way. I never... I've been struggling with two things. One is that I did meth in part because I wanted to know why so many guys I knew had struggled with this particular drug when I had done it at times before in my life and it had never exerted such a hold on me. Okay, this is the tea party or the green room tape. Okay, this is the basic narrative, right? I just, I just, you know, every so often, I, it seemed like every year or two, I would learn about somebody who was close to me and, you know, somebody who I knew, you know, um, who would write about um, or talk about, you know, or I found out about, you know, was struggling with crystal meth, you know. And, of course, as somebody who worked in the professional gay media for several years, first the late downtown gay magazine HX, which is not around anymore, and then at the Advocate magazine, you know, and I also covered a bit of gay culture for New York Magazine and other places. I mean, I even fucking wrote a piece praising fucking the Bush 2 administration around PEPFAR, which is in the, in, in, in hindsight, what I know now completely right it was completely bait and switch, right? But that's the 
that's the whole point, you know? I mean, when I had done... Well, let me just put it like this, you know? Not only did crystal meth prove to be much more difficult to stop doing than I anticipated, right? That it actually did confirm for me why it was so difficult for people. So I also be careful what you wish for. I mean, I wanted to see why it was so difficult. And it that third time I did it, because I had done it when I was a raver in the late 90s. It wasn't, it didn't exert that kind of hold on me. I had also tried it once in the 2000s, precisely because, again, I was like, everybody's doing it. Like, let not everybody, but if you wanted, if you were looking for sex online, it was very prominent. And I did have somebody over once who was very responsible and got me high on crystal and then brought me down again. But again, it was responsible, so I didn't get crazy, crazy, crazy high. And then it was years later that you know, literally in the final quarter of um, 2016, there is one weekend, and I do not have this, unfortunately, diarized, of course, because I wasn't trying to be found out in any particular way. The repercussions just seemed to be so high Right, I just didn't know how I was going to be, you know, if I were ever to talk publicly about doing crystal meth at that moment as I was doing it, it just seemed like everything that I had worked so hard for, including my relationship with Scott, was going to end, right? What happened is that everything actually did end, right? My relationship with Scott did end and my academic career did end. You know, but I met Arthur in the process and Arthur healed me in part by foreshadowing for me what would happen down the line. I mean, when I think about the Hail Mary pass, as I like to call it, that I threw to my friends in Hollywood, Arthur, in a way, threw me a Hail Mary pass. You know, and he said, catch it, right? Like that meme on Instagram that I love. But I knew enough about his journey that, you know, when I started to feel some of the things that he had said to me that I would feel and I would start to feel them, they were like milestones. And that's why I always say, you know, he told me this, I think it's a joke, but he said to me that he had once fisted somebody and he was able to, put his penis inside the person's butt and jack off at the same time. And I was like, no way. He was like, why? I don't know if that's true or not, but the point is, is even if I got fisted to that degree, right, I would still wake up the next day irritated by something if I let myself be irritated. Right? And that's why, you know, I would like to end this video with a particular note, right? Which is, again, gratitude. Because... Things worked out in such a way that I was able to get my PhD. And that remains the biggest achievement of my life. And I'm so glad that I got that degree. There's not a day that goes by where I'm not glad I didn't get that degree. There's not a day in my life where I don't see how that degree changed everything, right? I don't think that I would still be alive if I hadn't had that degree. I think I would, I think I was slowly dying and I honestly don't know if I would have had the fortitude to go the extra mile, right? I mean, today I'm going to wrap up here. I was in day seven of my teacher training to be a reading specialist for young people, especially who have difficulty reading for whatever particular reason. Um, and not just young people, but especially young people. Because um, like anything else, you want to reach people early when it comes to reading. 
you know, there was a slide that said, you know, all it takes to be extraordinary instead of ordinary is a little bit of extra effort. And that's true, people. So simple. Right? Just like loving other people, not hating other people, right? Creating room for people, right? Not taking room away from people. It really is that simple. You either share or you don't. You either love or you don't. You either give or you take. And speaking about taking, the forests ay, have been destroyed over the last century plus. Yeah, we've got a major echo collapse happening, people. I do believe that's the correct terminology. Thank you to Jamie Lee Curtis for that repost. All I've ever done is try to put a little extra special sauce on the final product, right? Just push myself a little further. Just push my nose out a little further. Bend into that tape so the photo finish, if necessary, because for some reason the digital record fails, the photo finish will give you the truth. That nose, that nose, well, that nose made the difference. Peace, everybody. That's my 2222.